Zabit Magomed Sharipov. Holy sh! Is this guy? <laughs> no, man. Zabit Magomed Sharipov is without a doubt the biggest what if story in MMA history. He was a fighter that immediately in his UFC debut was just destined for greatness, a true future world champion, and one of the most well rounded fighters that we've ever seen. But as soon as Zabit was just a fight away from being at the pinnacle of MMA, he pulled an avatar on us all and he vanished. What exactly happened to Zabit and where is he at today? Believe it or not, this superstar started out his amateur career with a record of 0-2, to which one of those defeats was against pound-for-pound -pound great Islam Mahashev in a Sambo match. Despite these two losses, Zabit would still turn pro and go on to win his first four professional bouts, two via decision and two via stoppage. He would then suffer his first defeat against Igor Igorov and would lose this bout in the third round via armbar. This would not only be Zabit's first loss on his record, but it will also be his last loss to date. He would then go on an absolute tear when winning eight fights in a span of just three years, and winning seven of those eight fights by stoppage. This incredibly impressive feat would of course get him recognized by the UFC, to which he would sign with the UFC in 2017 and make his UFC debut later on that year on September 2nd. And you could tell right away this guy was something different. He would go on to impress in his UFC debut and win via rear naked choke, and in his second bout in the UFC, he would win via Anaconda Choke. But at this time, Zabit is still virtually unknown. You can tell he definitely has some skill and some promise, but like I said, he's still virtually unknown until this next bout against Kyle Boschniak, to which he won a decision, but make no mistake, it was an absolute war. And a fight where Zabit was really able to show off his skill set. And not only did it have the MMA media buzzing, but it had a lot of fighters coming out with stories about how great Zabit really is. The, the one with Zabit in the training room, he threw a 360 spinning ninja kick and the, the leg wrapped around my neck. Oh, Jesus. I closed my eyes. I had never seen a ninja jump at me like that in a room, ever. Ray just asked me to jump in there with this guy. I didn't know who the hell he was, but I felt like I was set up for failure. <laughs> he's doing side kicks. He's doing jumping switch kicks. So I'm like, yo, what in the fuck is going on? And he's doing these side kicks from both sides. I'm shooting in. He's pulling me up and hitting me with these Sambo throws, Judo throws. And um, I'm just getting ragdolled. I'm like, if I wanted to go up at 45 at that point in my career, I'd be like, bro, I would, that would be a nightmare matchup. At this point, he has cemented himself as one of the most well-rounded fighters in the UFC. He has an incredible striking ability like Yaya Rodriguez, with also a background in Sambo, which as we know from a certain someone, can definitely be very useful in the UFC. And his jujitsu, well... Let's just say in his next bout, he would go on to show how well-rounded he actually is. Zabit would go on to virally submit Brandon Davis with a submission that was a mix between a knee bar and a banana split. And this would go crazy viral because it wasn't just the second time we've ever seen this, but we also saw that submission for the first time ever earlier that night when Aljamain Sterling pulled this same exact submission off. Only twice this has ever done in UFC history and they were both done on the same night. Of course, this shot Zabit up to unbelievable heights in popularity and the hype for this guy was absolutely real. He would then face his toughest test to date when he took on Jeremy Stevens. Who the fuck is that guy? And mind you, this was a Jeremy Stevens who just a year prior completely smashed Josh Emmett's face. So this was without a doubt Zabit's first true test, to which he was able to pass and win via unanimous decision, and then would also go on to defeat another scorching rising prospect in Calvin Cater. And with these pair of wins, he was on the cusp of a title shot. However, this was his last fight to date. About a year after the Calvin Cater fight, he was scheduled to take on Yair Rodriguez in a very highly anticipated bout that the MMA fan base had been waiting for for around two two freaking years but Rodriguez pulled out due to an ankle injury and Zabit was promised a title shot after the Yaya Rodriguez fight however since the fight didn't materialize Zabit felt as though he still earned his shot at the title and should be fighting then title holder Alexander Volkanovsky. He wasn't interested in taking on another contender but the UFC decided to take another route which frustrated and angered Zabit and this is where he pulls the last airbender on us and just completely vanishes. Two years go by there's nothing but questions and speculations but he would then take to social media and officially announce his retirement. And in this announcement, he would go over what really was going on the past couple years.
years and why he was unable to fight. A very similar situation to another very popular fighter that's going on right now in Hamzat Chemaev. He had serious health issues which kept him sidelined from fighting and due to these health issues he had a series of fights that had to be cancelled. On Instagram he made a statement saying that he felt as though he wasn't recovering the way he used to and this prevented him from performing at his best but he would express that he has an interest in staying in combat sports but this time as a coach as well as focusing on becoming a doctor. He just wants to focus on sharing his knowledge and experience to young up and coming fighters. However, it wouldn't take long for rumors and speculation of a possible return to the octagon. In 2023, the UFC would actually offer Zabi a title shot, which is what he was wanting all along, also against Alexander Volkanovsky, but he would turn it down due to being inactive for nearly four years. He felt as though he wasn't prepared properly for the title shot he has been longing for. Zabi is still relatively young, only 33 years of age, and on a social media page, you can see that he's still pretty active in the gym and occasionally posts videos of him still training. And even though it may seem as though he has walked away from the sport, he still continues to not entirely rule out the possibility of continuing his fighting career. Feel free to let me know what you think. Should Zabit Magomed Sheripov make a comeback and try to make another run at the title, or should he just stay in retirement?